I want to thank you guys so much for purchasing a Bomar nose button. We've worked for two years to get this as perfect as possible, making the most consistent anchor point an archer could ever shoot, and we have perfected it with the Bomar nose button. And in this package, it comes with two nose buttons, two different sizes, a smaller and a larger size, along with the serving that you need in order to tie it onto your string. So now I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to put this on your bowstring and just how easy it really is. And it'll work on any bowstring on any bow. All right, so in the package, you get two different sizes. You get two pieces of serving to tie it on and then you get a small and a large nose button. Now on these nose buttons, I'm just going to put this other stuff down here for a second. On these nose buttons you can see the string fits right in there and there's a tiny slot that's right here and this is going to be how you clip this onto the string. So you actually put, this, put it on the string with the long side up and it literally just clips on just like this. That simple and there's enough tension, no matter where you slide it, it will stay. So then you slide it up and down to where it's perfect, where it meets your nose. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now. So as you can see, the tension from the nose button by itself is enough to hold it in place on your string. So this allows you to be able to adjust it to find the perfect spot to put it on your string based on where you draw. So the rule of thumb, I always start about two inches from my peep sight down is a good place to start. Where you're going to want to do it if you or where you're going to want to put it if you have an adjustable sight is in the middle of your shooting range. So for example, if your max shooting distance is 50 yards and you shoot an adjustable sight, you would want to put your adjustable sight at 25 yards. If you shoot a hundred yards, then your where you want to put this to where your peep and your sight line up perfectly is at 50 yards. So Sarah's effective shooting range is going to be 80 yards. So we're going to want her to crank her sight to 40 yards. And then we'll go full draw. And, and I'll just have Sarah go ahead and go full draw. And then square up the peep with the sight. Right there. Okay, so this needs to go up. And then you just get it to where is it? perfect. It's perfect? Yep. Okay, so as you can see, it's poking straight into the tip of her nose. So you can go ahead and let down. And that is going to stay, that is going to stay perfect right there. And now it's ready to be tied in. It's as simple as that. Just go full draw, find it. It really helps if you have another person to move it to where it's perfect. But if not, you let down, adjust, go full draw until it's perfect. So that is as simple as it is to adjust it. Now I'm going to show you how to tie it in. By the way, you don't need a bow press to install this. It's just easier for me because then I could use two hands. There's no equipment required other than what comes with it. So Sarah drew back. We got it lined up perfectly. And also another point that I want to make out is the design of this nose button with the rigid spikes all the way around allows for string twist. So say your peep's a little off and your D loop is over here and you pull back like this, the rotation of the nose button won't make a difference because there's spikes evenly around the entire, the entire thing. So no need to worry about that. So tying it in, you're gonna use what's called a constrictor knot. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this with a much bigger string first, so then you can see how to do it and then we'll do it on the nose button. I'm going to teach you guys how to tie a three loop constrictor knot with this bigger string because it's easier to see. So you put it over the string like this and then you're going to wrap it three times over this string. It doesn't take a ton of pressure to hold that bottom string down. Just like that. Once you get it three times you're going to want to put it back through like this. under all three of these just like this and then through that back so then it literally looks just like that so that is a constrictor knot the tighter I pull this the tighter that will get and it won't loosen so that right there 
It's how you tie a three loop constrictor knot. So the constrictor knot is going to be pretty easy to tie on here because there's a slot right there actually. So same thing, you lay it over, pull the top over once, twice, three times. Then once you do that, all you got to do is then take this end and slide it back through that slot underneath very easy to do and then just pull tight and then you pull tight like this and the the material is designed not to tear so you could pull it super super tight and that way it will not move on that string so I could pull it super super tight and this is just with hands and then what I like to do because right there, I mean, that's good. That's not going to move by any means. But if I try really, really hard, I can move it like that, you can see. And I like that just to fine-tune it before I make it permanent. So once I pull it tight with just my hands like this, and I know that's the spot, I'll draw back, I'll shoot it a half a dozen times and make sure it's perfect. And when it is perfect, I'll take pliers and wrap around like this on the pliers wrap around like this on the pliers and then I will pull it super super tight and then if you are still worried about it moving up and down the string which it won't move but if you are you could also tie a constrictor knot on this side of it and a constrictor knot on that side of it and it will be locked in there forever the last step is just cutting this like this cutting here like this and then taking a lighter and burning those ends down. Now a quick lighter tip when you guys are burning the end. Come check this out. Never ever burn from underneath like this. You will cut your string, it'll burn your string right in half, it'll blow up. Always burn from above and come down like this. So if the string is at the bottom, just rotate your string and then come down. Never ever come from the side, never come from the bottom, always, always, always come from the top. Like that. There you go. Now, I would recommend going and shooting this as much as you want, but you can see I can't even rotate this on the string it is so tight like so I recommend shooting that a ton I don't think you're gonna have any worries about it actually sliding but one thing you can do if you want to make it absolutely permanent is you can do a constrictor knot on this side and a constrictor knot on this side on both sides like this and that will make it impossible for that to move but I don't think you have anything to worry as you can see that is not going anywhere. And that is how you tie on a Bomar nose button. I know it's called a nose button, but I think it's important to know exactly where on your nose you should anchor for the best and most consistent results. So I'm going to have my beautiful wife That's me. go ahead and go full draw. Now the tip of your nose or slightly under the tip is the most consistent place for you to be able to put the spike. Now that spike is going to poke you right in the nose and you will know exactly where that is. Unlike the string that can move up and down, a spike will be very consistent. So also, if people anchor on the side, like people wear glasses or whatever, anchor there, this is dangerous for you to shoot with that spike. You can go ahead and let down. So we, the material we used actually made it heat sensitive. So you can melt this and make the corners round if it's too sharp. I like it sharp because I anchor right on the tip of my nose or slightly under the tip. Um, I personally do the very tip. I know Levi Morgan that uses this goes slightly under. Sarah goes slightly under. It's kind of a personal preference. But the point of the spikes is to make the most consistent spot. And you'll know exactly when it hits you right in the nose. But if you anchor on the side of your nose, then because you wear glasses or that's how you're, you prefer to shoot, then you're going to want to take a lighter and melt the tips down and make them slightly duller for it doesn't scratch your nose. And when you let go, that first 
initial half inch is only going to be about 12 to 15 pounds in the string anyway. It's not going to be that much tension because if you shoot a modern compound, so it's not a huge deal if you do choose to use the spikes, but I would recommend trying it with heating it up with the lighter and melting those down and rounding them off to your personal preference.